lunchtime lesson. So we are looking at linkers today for informal writing. Um, we did a video a few weeks ago about linkers for formal writing. So we're going to look at informal ones today. Um, and we'll be doing a few of these uh, videos. So today I've selected um, some, about eight, I think eight we're going to look at. Uh, but we will come back and revisit this topic and look at a few more because I think it's a very useful one for your written English. So um, like I said, when we talked about formal linkers, uh, one of the biggest problems I usually see in my students' writing is that we're using an inappropriate linker for the context of what you are writing about, and uh, the register that you're writing about, sorry. And remember that being able to understand both register and tone is so important in you being able to produce better language. So to clarify what I mean by that, register is more the formality of a word. So if it's considered better used in a formal or informal piece of writing, but tone will give color to your writing. So if you're writing a scientific paper, it will have a different tone, to example, a review. And that's where your choice of words, collocations, phrases, and so on will, will reflect your writing. So when we're thinking about our linkers, we need to think about a, a mix of both, not only our register, but also the tone and when it's appropriate and what kind of writing it's appropriate to use in. OK, so this is, of course, important in all kinds of language, but it's particularly important in writing for a few reasons. One of that is that when you're speaking to somebody, people can get like visual clues and they can get some ideas of what you're trying to communicate or how appropriate you're being uh, with your body language. But of course, when you're writing, the, your um, reader doesn't have those visual clues. So you can only use the language to communicate that. You only get one chance in your writing. It's not like when you're speaking and you can correct yourself. So that's a really important reason to consider uh, your appropriacy. And also, it will lower the quality of the language that you're producing if, you're, uh, the, if the words that you are using are not appropriate for the register and the tone. OK, so we're going to have a look at some commonly used and very often misused informal linkers for writing. We're going to have a look at examples. Uh, we're going to have a look at how we should use them. And also just to clarify uh, some which can be confused because they're quite common words. So uh, it can sometimes we can sometimes confuse them for a different function. Yeah. And um, if you are planning to do or are doing any exams in English, remember that this is key vocabulary for you because it will contribute to your mark. When you're doing a B2 level or higher exam in the marking criteria, it always says that you have to produce a wide variety of cohesive devices. So that means not using the same ones all the time. So it's important for your um, exams. You also uh, should, for your exam, be able to understand and use them appropriately. Um, and of course, the other advantage of informal linkers is that we get to use them not only for our writing, but also for our speaking. So they're great pieces of language to bring into your, your spoken English for your day-to-day -day English, but also for your exams as well. So these are the ones that we're going to be looking at in detail today. Like I said, in another session, we'll look at some more. But we're going to be talking about also, however, even though, to, to, having said that, so and so that. Okay. So let's begin with also. I love this word. Also is a word that students forget to use a lot. Here's an example sentence. She sings beautifully and also plays the flute and piano. OK, so we use also to express addition and it means in addition to something else that you have already mentioned. Yeah. So that means that you get to use this when you're developing ideas. And um, also is a super common word. Look at its frequency. OK, it's an S1 and a W1. So that means it's in the top 3000, uh, top 1000, sorry, spoken and written words. And it's a great word to have. If a word is commonly used, if it's a high frequency word, we sometimes think that that means it's basic language. 
What that means is it's language you should definitely be using, right? Because we use it all the time. Just a few things to think about also. In written English, we don't use it at the start of a sentence, okay? I would if I was speaking, but not in written English. If you were starting a sentence and you want to have this idea of addition, that's when in more formal writing, remember because these linkers here, furthermore and moreover are very formal, in formal writing, you would begin with furthermore or moreover. If you're using also, you have to use it before the main verb in writing, okay? So I wouldn't say also it costs more, I would say furthermore it costs more or it also costs more and put also over here. If I was speaking, that first example would be fine, okay? But in written English, it goes before the main verb. Okay, next word we're looking at today is however. This is a cheap and simple process, however, there are dangers, okay? So however is a linker of contrast and um, you use it when you're adding a fact or a piece of information that seems surprising or very different from what you have just said. And that last piece, thing, uh, last sentence here, what you have just said is important to remember, okay? However, in terms of its register, it's actually quite neutral. So it's a great linker that you could bring into both informal and formal writing, yeah? It's very flexible. And it's also a really commonly used word. Here's the frequency for however. You'll see that it's a higher written frequency than spoken frequency, okay? But it's uh, it's a W1 um, frequency word for your writing, which means you should be using it quite a lot in your writing. It's, like I say, slightly more common in written English. And like, like I said before, you have to remember that however will always contrast previous information. And um, I say that because sometimes we're not sure with if we should use however or if we should use although. So the meanings of these are very similar, but although can be used to introduce information you are going to contrast. It can also introduce information you've already talked about. Okay, it's a bit more flexible in its position. So here's some examples. I love Scotland, however, the weather can be bad. Although the weather can be bad, I love Scotland. Okay, so I can put this at the beginning of what I'm going to contrast, but however, we'll always contrast what came previously. Yeah, what came before. Although it's flexible too, because you can move it around in a sentence, but however cannot be moved around in a sentence, right? So I would not say, however, I love Scotland, the weather can be bad, okay? I can though say, I love Scotland, although the weather can be bad. That's fine, yeah? So just remember that when you're using however, or if you're not sure which of the two you should be using. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about today is even though. I can still remember, even though it was so long ago. So even though it's another linker of contrast, but it's also used to add emphasis, okay? Especially uh, thanks to that word even there. So remember that. And um, it's emphasizing something that is true, although something else has happened or is true, okay? So this, it's, uh, this linker is something you would probably read in an email from a friend. All right. That's the kind of tone that you would expect even though to have. You could probably bring it into something like an article or a review as well. That would be appropriate tone. Um, but it's maybe not as appropriate as you would in a, in a much more informal setting, like if you were chatting with somebody you know. This is another great one that you can bring into your speaking, especially because it's got this idea of emphasis. Okay, moving on to two. So I'm studying English to get a good job, right? Now, when we talk about two, we're normally thinking of it to express an infinitive verb, okay? Right, like I um, I listen to music, something like that. Um, but we can also use two as a linker. And in when we're using it as a linker, it's expressing purpose or intention, okay? In written English, especially in uh, when we're 
when we have a more formal register, it's comment to see in order to. We could also say so as to, right? It would be more formal still. And um, really to highlight the fact that we're expressing purpose or intention. For example, investment has been increased in order to improve the transport system. But in more informal writing, there's absolutely no problem of just writing to like you have at the top there. And it's really common. Please be careful with two and four, which is a common error when we're expressing purpose. So the mistake I often quite see is I'm studying for get a good job or even for to get a good job. Sometimes people put both. If you're expressing purpose, you need to have two. We will not use four in this case. Similar to two, let's talk about two. Um, there are uh, there were people from all over Europe and America too. So don't confuse, of course, with two with one o. Easy mistake to make, uh, understandably. Uh, we're using this two here to add information, a bit like how we use also. Yeah. Uh, however, two is much more informal than also, even though they are synonymous. So. You can also use the word to as an adverb, which means more than acceptable, right? So you would see it in examples like this. The music was too loud. That's a totally different function to what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a different use. So watch out. It's really confusing when we have these informal linkers because they're quite often repeated with different functions in English. So this here is an adverb, not a linker. When we're using to... Uh, in order to add information and as a synonym of also, you have to put it at the end of a sentence, okay? So I also like reading, but if I was using to, I'd say I like reading too, okay? Your position is going to be important. Right, moving on to having said that. So the diet could make you slim without exercise. Having said that, however, exercise is important too. So having said that is a contrasting linker. Um, we're using it to say that something is true in spite of what you have just said. It's great if you're trying to sort of compare or weigh up an argument. Yeah. So if you want to look at both sides of something. Um, this is a brilliant linker that you can also bring into your speaking. It's fantastic. And it's um, important, though, to think about the tone of having said that. OK, so when is it appropriate to use it? So here's a big selection of examples of corpus. Yeah, you'll see that there's lots here that start with the word but, but having said that, but having said that, but having said that, yeah. Uh, you can see that all of these here, they're much more conversational in tone. And what most of them are doing is expressing personal opinion. Okay, so that means that if you were writing an article or a review, in terms of exams, this would be a great linker to use. Yeah. And also, if you were, of course, writing the informal letter, it would work really well, too. Yeah. But it's generally to bring in personal opinions. And it's also usually used to um, look at both sides of an argument. Moving on to so. I was feeling hungry, so I made myself a sandwich. Right. So so in this example is being used to express the consequence of something. Um, we use this to say that you do something because of the reason just stated. So basically, this is what I did and this was the consequence of that. This was the reason why. Um, again, so is one of these words that has lots and lots of different uses, okay? So if we're using so as a linker, you're always gonna have to connect two clauses. It's more commonly used in spoken English, but you can also bring it into your writing. In written English, in a more formal register, you're gonna see words like therefore or consequently. Okay, but remember here, we're thinking about formal writing. So she had previous experience, therefore she seemed the best candidate, yeah? Again, though, if you are doing an email to a friend, for example, then this is a brilliant choice for you to use. And it's fantastic for your speaking. You should definitely be bringing it into your spoken English. We did an entire lesson on so 
and the different uses of so. Um, so if you want to go into more detail for that, I recommend going back. If we have a look at the frequency there, you'll see that it's a S1 here, so higher in spoken English, but it is still in the top 3000 for written English. So it's definitely one that's good to use in your informal writing. Very similar to so is so that, right? Why don't you start, start out early so that you don't have to hurry? So, so that here is being used to express purpose, yeah? It's different from the previous one we just saw as so being used as a consequence. And when we use so to express purpose, it will be followed generally by can or could or will or would and a verb, yeah, like this. He lowered his voice so that Doris wouldn't hear, okay? You'll notice that we've got a noun in there, right? So you'll have to have some kind of a noun following so that da 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 wouldn't hear. Um, here's another example. She's studying English at night school so that she can go to university. Okay, so you can see how we're using our models here. Can hear, would hear. Okay, it's not necessary to use that. You can omit it, yeah? And in informal writing and speaking, it's very common to leave it out. So I might just say, we've planned a variety of activities, so there'll be something for everyone. Oops, okay. And I can take away that or I can keep it in, yeah? I do need to use so. Okay, so we planned a variety of activities, so there'll be something for everyone, right? This can make it a bit more confusing because obviously then it looks the same as the previous so that we saw for a consequence. Okay. So let's have a go. Okay, guys, I've got eight questions and I would like you please to take a couple of minutes and see if you can do the task. Choose one of those linkers or the missing space. Some could have more than one option but I have arranged it so you should really only choose one so that they all fit. Okay so take a few minutes and see if you can if you can answer the questions. Okay so let's look at these answers. So our first one guys should have been two. Edinburgh's a wonderful city and beautiful too. Number two was even though I re recommend going, even though it's quite far. Three, we're working late so that we can have the weekend off or so. We don't need to have the that. A lot of people come to Scotland to improve their English. It was very quiet, so the restaurant closed early. Education is important. However, going straight into work is a good idea. Living with COVID restrictions has been terrible. Having said that, I don't know what else the other the government could have done. And finally, reading is lots of fun and can also improve your English. Yeah, how did you get on? Okay. Just to finish with, a few important things to remind you. First of all, what I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, please remember that informal or high frequency language, so language that we use in informal situations and language which scores very highly on frequency isn't bad language. I feel like sometimes we, we think that because a word is used a lot, um, then it's not a, a good word to bring into your own language. You'll probably sound a bit weird Right, if you're speaking English and using what you consider to be better or posher language in normal day-to-day -day interactions, okay, you're, you're just gonna come across a bit strange because that language isn't appropriate for that register and that tone and that situation, yeah? And um, there's a reason that these words are high frequently frequency words and that's because we use them so much in the language and they're convenient and they allow us to express what we need to express. Yeah. So of course, keep learning new vocabulary, keep challenging yourself, keep bringing new expressions into your writing, but just make sure it's appropriate for what you're for what you're producing. And remember that this kind of language that many people sometimes consider basic is great language and it's language that you should use and you should know. Okay. And finally, um, we talked about this in our last focus on linkers. But just a reminder that if you haven't been to this website, this is a great free tool from Cambridge English called Write and Improve. 
and it's this little website here it's totally free and um, you get to you just need to sign in log, uh, sign up sorry and your writing will go in and you'll get automatic grades and feedback for your English writing okay never as good as a teacher obviously uh, which is why I recommend still having a real life teacher not just uh, a robot but it is great for you to do your own practice with writing and use that tool okay great well, best of luck with your writing and I look forward to any